What's up guys and welcome to Wall Street Millennial. On this channel, we cover all things stocks and investing. In this video, we're going to go over the greatest gains and losses on the Wall Street Bets forum from the past week so we can learn from other people's experiences. Before we get into the video, we'd like to thank our channel members who get access to these non-time sensitive videos one day in advance. They also get to vote on some of our video topics. First we have none other than Keith Gill, aka Roaring Kitty, aka Deep Effing Value, with another massive update on his GameStop trades. On Friday, April 16th, he posted his final update on his GameStop YOLO. In it, he showed that he had exercised his $50,000 calls to buy 50,000 shares of GameStop at a price of just $12 a share. He has additionally bought another 50,000 shares of GameStop and holds more than $3.5 million in cash. After this trade, his portfolio is worth a whopping $34,400,000. After his post, GameStop stock increased in after hours trading by $5 to $161 a share. Needless to say, Mr. Gill has done extremely well on his GameStop trade, having made more than $20 million of unrealized gains in addition to the estimated $10 million of already realized gains. At the end of 2020, he owned about 10,000 shares of GameStop, which he then increased to 50,000 in January and then 100,000 in February. In the congressional testimonies in the second half of February, he said that he still believed that at the time, the market was not giving GameStop credit for its business prospects. It seems he put his money where his mouth was and now has profited literally millions of dollars off his insight. Next we have user JoeTex100 with a massive gain on calls on Clover Health. He owns hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of calls on Clover, which is the healthcare service tech company that Chamath Pala Hapatia took public through his back several months ago. The stock jumped 34% on Friday in an apparent short squeeze after having bled out below its SPAC price of $10 a share over the past few months. The OP owned calls expiring in the next several months of various strike prices, ranging from $7.5 to $12.5. In all, he has $680,000 worth of calls now, after Friday's 34% rally. His one-day gain was almost $500,000, meaning his portfolio of calls quadrupled in one day alone. User JBMac007 complains that whenever a short squeeze or other thing like this happens, whenever he jumps on the bandwagon, it never works out for him. Apparently, he feels as though whenever he bets on a stock, it'll end up finishing the day down 30% because he jumped on. User BTSD responds by saying that you can't hop on these things after you start seeing gain porn on it. By that time, it's already too late. He says he prefers to quote, buy the rumor, sell the news, unquote. Otherwise, it's just buying a lottery ticket. Next, we have user MadSnicked, who has made more than a quarter million dollars on a concentrated position on Riot blockchain. He is holding 11,000 shares of Riot stock, which he bought for an average cost of $24.84 a share. Riot stock has done extremely well over the past 6 months due to the rise in Bitcoin prices. The price of Bitcoin directly impacts Riot blockchain's profitability because they make money through mining Bitcoin. Because of this, the price of Riot has rallied with Bitcoin and also cooled off somewhat since February when Bitcoin's rally lost some steam. Since October of last year, when Riot was trading at $3 a share, the stock has increased more than tenfold to $44.64 a share, a 1,250% increase. The OP didn't get in at quite the bottom, but close enough to the bottom that he was able to take advantage of half of this incredible run. This is the exact type of YOLO and success that Wall Street Bets users live for. The comment section expresses nothing but admiration for the OP's trading abilities. User It's April adopts the OP as their father, asking when the OP will pick them up. But there's one commenter who won't let the fact that the OP is still using Robinhood slip by. Trading on Robinhood helps hedge funds by selling your order flow to market makers, which are sometimes run by hedge funds, as is the case with Citadel. Also, they lend out your shares to short sellers who are mainly also hedge funds. As a result, by using Robinhood to trade, the OP is indirectly giving more business to hedge funds. Next off, we're revisiting an old post from a previous video. A couple weeks ago, we covered user TU Nice, who posted this screenshot of his Robinhood portfolio on April 1st. He had $146,000 of gains he made by trading Tesla calls in the past. On April 1st, he plowed all of these gains into 91 contracts of 700 strike Tesla calls, expiring in less than 2 weeks. At this point, Tesla's stock was about $661, so his calls were almost $40 out of the money. Tesla's stock drifted lower throughout the day, and by the end of the day, his calls had declined in value by 49%, or a whopping $72,000. At the time, we said things looked pretty bleak for this position and it would end up being a loss most likely. Instead of locking in his loss, TU Nice held the position over the weekend. His diamond hands paid off and on Monday, April 5th, Tesla opened up, coming within striking distance of the $700 strike calls. 
he sold out of the position at the open for around $25 per call. This yielded him 52%, or $76,000 of profit from the time he bought it. TU Nice emptied out most of his Robinhood account at the beginning of April, but left $35,000 in it which he used to scalp and trade Tesla options. In the first week of April, he made more than 500% gains, turning his initial $35,000 into more than $200,000. The bulk majority of his gains came from Tesla calls, but he also made some plays on Roku, Amazon, Alibaba, JD, and Square. He didn't only go long, he also made money on Amazon puts as he thought the stock was primed for a sell-off. All of these positions combined contributed to his six-figure gains. Despite the undeniably impressive trading results, the OP is actually a relative newcomer to the stock market, only starting investing in April of 2020. His first trade was eBay calls which minted him $16 of gains. After making this small win, he was hooked. While he's had ups and downs over the past year, the end results have been incredible. Besides the $220,000 he has in Robinhood, he also has another $420,000 in his second account as of about a month ago. Assuming he hasn't lost any of these gains since then, his net worth would be in excess of $60,000, a truly life-changing amount of money. Next off, we have user Straight Zlat, whose Robinhood account shows a negative balance of $660. He fears Robinhood CEO Vlad Tenev may pay him a visit to collect on this debt. The OP owned 405 and 410 strike spy puts expiring on April 19th. The spy has increased to record highs in recent days, sitting at $417. This means his puts are likely to expire worthless. He also owns 20 strike calls on CCJ that expire on Friday, April 16th. CCJ, or Cameco, is the world's largest publicly traded uranium company. As of 2015, it was the world's second largest uranium producer, accounting for 18% of world production. On April 16th, the stock closed at $16.31, below the OP strike price of $20, so the calls expired worthless. In total, the OP lost 102% of his portfolio, or $38,000. He was likely playing call spreads, which can often lead to negative reported account balances when one leg of the spread is closed before the other. If this is the case, his negative balance will disappear after both legs have been fully settled and he likely doesn't have to worry about Vlad coming to his house. Next off we have user Kane1418 who posted some pretty severe loss point on Lordstown Motors, ticker symbol RIDE. He owned 10 shares of RIDE as well as $15 calls expiring on December 2021. Between the two positions, he is down almost $53,000. Lordstown is an EV company that plans to manufacture fully electric pickup trucks with its factory located in Lordstown, Ohio. It went public via a SPAC in mid-2020 and immediately got a lot of hype from retail investors during the EV craze. However, on March 12, 2021, short-selling firm Hindenburg Research, the same firm that took down Nikola, accused Lordstown of overstating their pre-orders. Shortly after this, the SEC started an inquiry into the matter and the stock fell more than 30%. It now sits at $10 per share almost exactly the same as the initial SPAC price. With the recent decline in share price, the OP's calls are now more than 50% out of the money. They don't expire until December, so there's still a chance they could end up being a winner if the company actually delivers on its production targets this year. However, at this point, it looks like a slim chance. Despite the bad press regarding Lordstown, the OP is still a believer in the stock and thinks the shorts will end up being proven wrong. His high confidence in the trade caused some commenters to question his mental facilities. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. If you like the content, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for future uploads. Also, make sure to check out our second channel, WSM Research, where we post DD on high growth tech stocks. Finally, follow us on TikTok and Instagram, and we'll see you in the next video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.